Well, I don't know how much of this you already know, but BCTV's got a weekly media roundup, and I've picked out the name, very clever name, in fact, 545 Live. One, because it starts at 5.45 p.m. Eastern Time, or in this case, 5.46.22, because of some technical problems. But normally we start at 5.45 p.m. Eastern Time, so we called it 5.45, and it's live, which means I get to say whatever I want, no matter uh, what the script says or what people do, and it's gonna go out to everybody out there to see. Hence 5.45 Live, that's the name of the show. Uh, we bill it as a media roundup. It's not really a news program, but we do like to look at the headlines, courtesy of Brattleboro's bevy of independent media and news sources. We also will take a look at uh, upcoming events. Wait a minute, why am I even going into this when I could have fancy, fancy coming up on deck graphics? There we go. Peter Welsh was in Brattleboro this week. We're gonna break it down on his stop by the downtown region. What's the deal with the board's latest option tax proposal? Well, it's pretty similar to some of the other option taxes we've heard about over the years. And uh, it was MLK Day this week. We'll talk about some of the region's uh, commemorations and celebrations. Break that all down, plus a seven-town summary that includes uh, the latest uh, in Dummerston, where they had a special townwide meeting. Uh, also, the Brat Town School Board's open public forum, which drew quite a lot of attention this week, and plenty more municipal coverage as well. I'm going to do it in 15 minutes. I'm going to make it my goal even to do it in less times. You can get out there and enjoy the weekend. We do it all under the guise of this here 545 Live broadcast. So if you've got the time and the attention span, stick with us right here on 545 Live. Welcome back to this January 24th, 2014 edition of 545 Live. That's footage of this past Monday's Putney School's annual Martin Luther King Day celebration visit to the Putney Food Co-op. As the region joined the nation this past Monday in paying tribute to the civil rights work of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., something we now turn to the students of Landmark College's broadcast journalism class for more on. The world would be a totally different place without Martin Luther King. We celebrate this man every January because he was a vital civil rights activist and held the answers to the problems of the time. Many people knew him as a spokesperson for the equality of African Americans, but what many don't know is that he also, he also had plans for the poor to prosper as well. A lot of people just see Martin Luther King Day as a holiday, but is more than just another day off from work. Martin Luther King was originally Michael Luther King after his father took a trip to Germany and studied the famous theologian Martin Luther. He thought it was appropriate to not only change his name, but his son's name as well. Martin Luther King Day is a celebration of a truly great man, and the world would not be the same without him. Next up, there is but one Vermont resident who uh, gets to sit in the U.S. House of Representatives. That's Peter Welsh these days, and he was back in uh, the Brattleboro area this week to talk with his constituents a little at an open forum at the River Garden. And who else was there but hardworking BCTV volunteer Maria Dominguez to document some of the questions? Let's roll the video. I've got a colleague from Arkansas who's from a very conservative district with military background, and he's a real conservative Republican. Wonderful, wonderful guy. And he won his race by like 86, to, I don't know, whatever. And I said, Steve, what do people say is the big issue? And he said, they said to me, why don't you guys get together and get something done? And I heard that all the time from Vermonters. You know, and obviously we're not Arkansas. That full video of Peter Welsh's latest visit to Brattleboro, documented by hardworking BCTV volunteer Maria Dominguez, can be found in its entirety this coming week right here on BCTV Channel 8. And as always, you can stream it at your leisure at brattleboro.tv.org. All right, moving on in the local headlines here, and for that, back into the newsroom we go. Last fall, members of Brattleboro's representative town meeting a governing body gathered at Academy School for a special town meeting to discuss the $14 million police fire upgrade project an undertaking they approved while simultaneously voting down a proposed 1% local option tax that would have alleviated the coming property tax burden on Brattleboro residents, an option tax that's now back up for discussion. As this week, the Brattleboro Select Board opted to once again present the tax to the town meeting members this coming March. Considering the budget and funding issues that continue to confront us, 
many members of the board have continued to believe that consideration of the local option sales tax being essentially the last remaining potential revenue source that's authorized by the state government, that consideration of that continues to be an appropriate uh, approach to dealing with our funding gap. And with that, it's time to launch into one of my favorite new segments here on 545 Live, where I, I'm joined via split screen from Studio B by the latest member of our 545 Live team, Robert Stack. Robert, uh, break it down on this tax a little. This is uh, something that's been tried uh, more than once here now in Brattleboro, and it uh, always seems to prove controversial. But we're talking about uh, a tax that is at the heart uh, very local for a very local purpose. You know, we pay taxes. Let's say you live in Guilford. You pay taxes in Guilford, but yet you utilize Brattleboro uh, Town Services. The idea being that I, I really believe that most people feel a regional sense, and not just an alliance to their own little town, but to the region in general, and that includes Brattleboro. One of the debates that always comes up uh, when we talk about adding uh, taxes in the local area, especially when you talk about state taxes in Vermont in addition to that, uh, is this idea that that's going to push uh, shoppers across the river over into New Hampshire where taxes are significantly less. I, I'm not sure about that. I, I think most people who shop in Brattleboro are going to shop in Brattleboro. Now sometimes if you do comparison shopping for big ticket items, you might go online or you might decide that it's, you know, you go to Walmart or something. But I think by and large, the majority of folks shop in, in Brattleboro. They want to shop at Zephyr's. They want to stop at Mocha Joe's. They go to co-op. Uh, you know, they're up on Putney Road. They're down the Canal Street. They're, you know, these, this is where you come. And, and I don't think anybody would begrudge. I mean, we pay taxes to the federal government. We pay taxes to the state. We take gasoline taxes, um, but I don't, I really don't, I think the majority of the people would support paying a couple pennies on a dollar to help support the fire and the police department and give them a better quality workplace. I think most people are okay with it. Robert Steck joins us each week on 545 Live. You can also catch him as a part of the live half-hour broadcast right here on BCTV Channel 8 on Mondays at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. The show is Let's Talk About Mental Health, where he's joined by area psychiatrist Nils Kloster to discuss issues related to mental well-being in this day and age. They've got another live broadcast this coming Monday. Robert, thanks for joining us as always. For our next story here, we're going to stick with that select board meeting where SEVIDS, or the Southeastern Vermont Economic Development Strategies Group, uh, also made a presentation before the board and for that we're going to launch into our commons news report and I'm going to attempt a little split screen here so we can take a look at uh, the article in full by Olga Peters of the commons. I'm headed to commonsnews.org their website to check it out but you can also pick up a paper at newsstands. This uh, article was originally published in the commons issue number 238 on Wednesday the 22nd this week. We're going to start here in the First lines of this article as the Brattleboro Select Board unanimously approved $36,147 for the Southeastern Vermont Economic Development Strategies Group, or SEVEDS, at its January 21st meeting. Uh, now, SEVEDS is part of the Brattleboro Development Credit Corporation, which is focused on improving economic conditions in Wyndham County. This is the second year that SEVEDS has asked municipalities to help fund economic development strategies. For more, you can uh, follow up on that uh, article from Olga. It's all at commonsnews.org, where you can also find out how to become a local media partner and sponsor this independent news source. All right, back into the stories we go here for our next uh, look. Complaints that both reflective materials during the day and bright work lights during the night have led to dangerous levels of decreased visibility on the span of the I-91 bridge remaining open during construction has led to project manager Garrett Hoffman of the Pennsylvania-based firm Fig Bridge Engineers, Inc., charged with uh, the project's undertaking, uh, has led him to tell the reformer that serious steps would be taken in the coming weeks to mitigate the problems for commuters who are still forced to continue traveling the Route 30 and I-91 corridors. Moving on in the news stories, more municipal coverage from right here in Brattleboro, including the Brattleboro Town School District Board. We've got a script to go with it. Let's take a look. Next up... It's uh, no doubt been a rocky fall for the Brattleboro Town School Board with a very public complaint filing of Academy teacher Lauren Ashley over sick time compensation dominating the dockets at regularly scheduled meetings. But for one local resident at this week's board-hosted open forum, it was described as a good bounce back. 
Uh, as this week, more than 60 local residents turned out to discuss potential improvements for the town's three public elementary schools. Uh, something BCTV videographer extraordinaire M. Richards was on hand to gather video of and video that we'll take a look at right now. So the three questions are, what's working? What do we want more of? And given budget realities, where should we focus? How do you prepare kids for jobs that don't exist yet? Um, test scores to be roadblocks. Uh, grading schools on tests um, that kids don't buy into might not be wise. Uh, everyone learns differently. Testing as a focus throws everything askew. We were saying, what does it even look like? Because all we really know is the factory model. So what does the non-factory model look like? Um, conformity and standardization. How do you evaluate in this model? A look at some of the municipal happenings in Brattleboro. You can find this week's Brattleboro Select Board meeting along with Brattleboro Town School District Board meeting to stream at your leisure at brattleborotv.org. But there's actually seven other towns in the surrounding area that we serve here at BCTV as well, including Vernon, Guilford, Demerston, Putney, Newfane, Townsend, and Jamaica. And we gather Select Board meeting footage from every one of those towns including in Demerston, where uh, this week the board hosted a special uh, meeting to discuss redistricting, something that had local residents quite impassioned. I go down the list of uses that are allowed in residential and uses that are allowed in uh, rural commercial. Uh, for most of the list, the one, you know, you could have an animal hospital as a conditional use in rural commercial, you could have an animal hospital in residential as a uh, conditional use. There seems to be a point to say that, well, we're going to give a lot to residential. But what I've seen in history in Demerson is that the more residential that surrounds commercial, the worse it gets. It's not what I want to do with the land, yeah. it's what the people who I want to sell it to want to do with the land. Right. That also concerns me. Yeah. And before I let you go for the weekend here, let's take a look at what upcoming events you can expect to enjoy in the region. For that, we're going to check in with our latest web upload feature, also hosted by uh, myself, which means I get to send it to me, and then uh, I get to send it back to me. But uh, it's worth taking a look at. It's all sponsored by the Breadware Savings and Loan. I get to hop up in front of BCTV's interactive video wall and take a look at a series of clickable links that uh, have to do with upcoming events, show you spotlight videos and more. Let's roll the segment. From there, we're going to move on and take a look at a couple all-day events. Uh, on Saturday, the 25th here, we're going to start uh, with the Latchis Arts uh, event going on. It's a uh, gardening inspiration workshop. It's a fundraiser uh, event for and at the Latchis. Uh, it starts at 9 a.m., runs to 5 p.m. with a whole series of workshops there. Registration kicks off at 8.30 a.m. Generations of people can come and feel like they're connected to something. So that's why we're asking for help. And if you feel strongly about the theater as we do, we really hope you'll get to the Glatches Theater in Brattleboro, Vermont. And speaking of all-day events, uh, get a look at the Northern Roots Festival here as they get ready to kick off at noon on Saturday. It'll run all the way till 10 p.m. That's right, uh, you can catch them at the New England Youth Theater. They also have some informal pub sing gatherings at McNeil's Brewery as well. For more uh, details on that, you can head to bmcvt.org, the Brattleboro Music Center's official website, or check out the Spotlight video right now. Brattleboro is a, is a town that is very, has a very, um, it's very rich in its musical talent, traditional, in traditional music. And uh, we were very excited about the idea of having an event that kind of tried to bring some of that community together of musicians, and then to share that with, with the community at large. All right, now we've really uh, worn out our welcome here in 545 Live, or at least our 15 minute time slot. I can see it ticking down uh, behind me in the Another corner of my eye here, so I'll make this brief. Thanks for joining us. Uh, be sure to check in with us this coming week on brattlebrotv.org and youtube.com slash brattlebrotv for a series of web upload content videos, or check in again next Friday at 5.45 p.m. Eastern Time right here on BCTV Channel 8 when we'll pack them all in, sum them all up, take a look at area headlines, upcoming events, and much more for another broadcast. In the meantime, thanks for watching.